Hey, Bree. Give us one minute here. We're going to try to fix the audio. We'll be right back. This is Patrick at QDabra. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, we're having a very uh, temporary audio issue here. We'll, we'll resolve this in a minute, and I appreciate your patience. So just give us one more minute. Thank you. Bree, can you hear me? You've got yourself muted still. And uh me can you hear me now, Patrick? Okay, that sounds much better. Thanks, Bree. Oh, yeah. This has been a, a strange morning. Sorry, folks. My um go to meeting seems to have a, a ghost lurking in the background. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, let's charge on with our webinar. <laughs> Um, like I said, my name is Bree Houston, and I'm going to be your presenter for this morning. This is Form Viewer 1.0 release. Our theme is get more mileage out of your InfoPath investment. So we're going to go over um, a few different things this morning and give you all the details of our Forms Viewer 1.0 release. So here's our schedule for today. We're going to jump into kind of the history of Forms Viewer, where we started and how things came to be. Then we're going to jump into the how-tos, installing the app on O365 and a few other things. We'll talk a little bit about what's new, the latest features in Forms Viewer and what's supported. And then we're going to do a demo, kind of a real-world case study of a leave request scenario. Um, and this is kind of that example of something that you would probably use in um, how it functions with the Forms Viewer and no InfoPath Form services. And then lastly, we're going to kind of hint on what's next. Um, our goal here is continued development of the Forms Viewer app, and we'll give you a little preview of what we'll be working on for our next release. So a little bit of the history. Um, InfoPath um, has been and will continue to be one of the most powerful means of capturing your data. There are countless businesses that rely on this technology for business process, capturing of data, storage of data, um, and there's many advantages to using InfoPath for data capture. So kind of some of the most notable reasons why InfoPath is cool or beneficial and just overall one of the best um, data capturing programs in the business. Um, it's offer office worker friendly. That's a tongue twister. So what this really means is that there's lots of rules, validation um, built into your form development, and there's not really any need for a developer. So it makes it a more low-cost solution, and 
it also means that you won't be inputting any of your own custom code. It also creates good looking forms with many extensive features and lots of controls. So this really extends uh, your ability to do many different things um, when capturing the correct types of data. InfoPath is also easy to deploy. Um, there's no client installs required. You can have browser or filler based forms. And there's automatic upgrades when your templates change. So it's a very uh, fluid program to use. And it also bridges to web services. And most notably, um, is going to be its kind of compatibility with SharePoint and its native XML support. So, yeah, Bree, so all, let me just expound on that. I mean, for those yeah. of you who, who are wondering still, you know, about what InfoPath, Microsoft is going to do moving forward, you know, the, the good news is if you're using InfoPath, it's your data format. XML is, is the data format, and that means you own the data format for your forms, which means you can migrate them to any technology in the future that Microsoft comes up with or keep them in, in XML and, and migrate them uh, to web pages or whatever down the road if InfoPath becomes um, unsupported in some future, like in 2023 or in, in a few years from now. Um, because the data is in XML, you've got migration options. And that's not true for a lot of other, a lot of other technologies. Thanks, Bree. Yeah, not a problem. I think that was a very important point, is that it's very applicable um, to transfer of other things. So <laughs> this image here, I think it says it all. Um, back in October, we kind of sent out a newsletter with the details of what was going on. But essentially, we were all spectators enjoying our InfoPath forms, kind of reaching the end zone, their goal. And then Microsoft kind of dropped the ball. Uh, they announced that InfoPath would no longer um, be in development, uh, essentially being deprecated over time. And with the uncertainty of um, InfoPath's future, we kind of recognized the importance to create um, something new and the opportunity in this kind of gap um, with InfoPath. So this all stems back to the future of eForms and how we can capture data. So with InfoPath's eventual deprecation, which Microsoft has projected over a 10-year time span. So we have a decade to figure out our migration options, but we feel that it's important to kind of start thinking about your next steps and the solution that you're going to migrate to in the future simply for ease of um, kind of that changeover. Here's an article. This was in our last um, Forms Viewer release as well. Um, but it essentially kind of details um, what the steps are as far as you know when things are going to happen. Um, you all will be getting the slides after the webinar, so feel free to go and check out um, this article if you have not. Um, and it really just gives you know some good facts about moving forward and what's happening with InfoPath. So back to our nice um, football analogy here. Um, we at Kidabra kind of took this opportunity to recover that loose ball. And this move to create Forms Viewer as an app was kind of the recovery, so to speak. Uh, we're taking action to give people a solution that will work with their current investment and kind of bridge the gap, so to speak, between uh, InfoPath form services and their InfoPath forms. So what is Forms Viewer? For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's essentially the migration path for your InfoPath forms. Um, it's a very easy way to take your existing XSNs and XML and have them still live natively in the cloud or Office 365 or whatever version of SharePoint comes out next um, because it's independent of InfoPath form services. So that's a really good point to recognize in the Forms Viewer app. It's also a community-based open source project, which essentially means that um, the code and development is um, kind of reliant on our community for updates and um, continued development of, um, of the project. And the continuous improvement model, this is also a a big deal to us at here at Qdabra. We are focusing on quarterly releases, um, essentially so that there's continual updates on this forms viewer and more and more features um, that are going to support your InfoPath forms. So the benefits to you, it's going to be maintaining your current investment. Some people may have a fairly large investment in InfoPath, and so it's going to allow you to kind of continue um, 
that investment until you're ready to move on to something else. And it adds uh, features to your forms. Some of you may be familiar with Q-Rules, kind of the uh, enhancement of some key features that we found ourselves coding over and over without code. Uh, so that's going to be another big deal for you here. And easy to install SharePoint app, we'll demo that a little bit later. And it supports your document center centric eForms um, and very similar to how InfoPath functions today. So why is Forms Viewer beneficial? Um, you can see that it's going to take your current solutions and kind of very easily transition them um, into kind of those next steps and continue your data gathering processes. And it's a solution uh, to keep that investment. And the biggest thing is that you can use your current solutions with very few modifications, and this is not the case in several other solutions. So it's going to be kind of a next nice uh, step after InfoPath. So here's the history of Forms Viewer. Um, back in October, we started with just the announcement that our new app suite, including Forms Viewer and Site Scanner, and a list of their features in our newsletter. So there's a link there um, that you can visit after the webinar. Then in December, we did our pre-beta release with some notable features, um, such as SharePoint Library Submit, some expression boxes, um, some highly used controls that uh, you can find yourself using over and over in your InfoPath forms. Then in March, we did our beta release um, with even more features, some onload rule functionality, querying SharePoint lists so you can bring in external data. And then we are at right now, so July 2014, version 1.0 release. And we're calling it our 1.0. It's really kind of a 0.8 or a 0.9. Um, but we're you know almost to that 1.0, and we're just so excited that we wanted to share the 1.0 release. So. Um, We'll be looking to enhance that even more. And then in October, we'll do our next version release um, with some key features that we'll hint on at the end of this webinar. So this is our FormsCo site. And you can see our solutions matrix. This is going to be where you can find all the resources about this community project, as well as other um, kind of migration options. And so this is kind of all part of that history of the Forms Viewer and uh, creating migration paths. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into our install demo. So you can see here um, I have a test site. And what I'm going to do, oops, I was on the right site. We'll go back. Um, you can see that I'm on my team site here. Um, and then on kind of the back end, I have my site collections and management. And what I'm going to do is just simply install the app. So I'm going to go to my apps. And maybe a good part to kind of show before is that my site contents, you can see that I don't have my Forms Viewer app. If I try and add an app here, it's not there right now. And it's going to appear right in that first one. So we're going to go to our app catalog and apps for SharePoint. We're going to add a new app and browse to the location of the .app. So you can see here, and this might be helpful for those of you who um, are going to try this out later on in our download that we'll be giving you. If you navigate Forms Viewer 1.0 to the Forms Viewer folder and Forms Viewer app .app and open. Simply click OK. And our upload has completed. So now when we navigate back to our site, we're going to take a step back. We're going to add an app. And you can see our Forms Viewer has appeared right here. We're simply just going to click on it. Trust. And you can see that our Forms Viewer is loading currently. And this may take a moment for it to install. Not too long. And there it is, ready to use. We can click on that then. If we had a, um, a URL, um, we could simply um, enter our URL there and the document path. And can everyone still hear me OK? It looks like I was getting a prompt about my audio again. Uh, yeah, I can hear you fine. Bray, you're good. 
Okay, great. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, so that is the quick and easy install of the app back to our site. And you can see it's a pretty simple, easy install. Okay, so new features for Forms Viewer. And you'll notice from past webinars, we talked about things like um, our repeating sections. We've kind of enhanced our date picture, our picture attachments, the insert and delete functionality on our repeating sections, and a custom title column, which is really a big deal. Um, we also have some new um, data connections, the ability to share point list filter. Um, our new formatting is the form close event and rules, form load, and username, which are very valuable um, when you're kind of wanting some things to happen automatically on your form open. And then our platform, we have O3CC5 as an app and SharePoint app, and SharePoint Foundation, which is kind of a special case available on request. You can email us for kind of some more information if you're interested in that one. And now we're going to go back to our Forms Viewer app and go through um, kind of the demo with that. So I'm first going to show um, our lead request in the designer, just to show that it really is a fully designed InfoPath form. We have um, different sections that we're hiding and showing, um, some different formatting. You can see um, different entry spaces or date pickers. And at the bottom, we have this repeating section that pulls in data from a secondary data source. You can see here, we have our Kadabra team info and our leave request showing existing requests right here. So you can see those nodes right in our secondary data source there. And what I'm going to do now is on our leave request page, um, I'm going to open a new leave request. And you can see that this is going to open right in the Forms Viewer. And it might just take one moment. There we are, our Forms Viewer opening our leave request form. So you can see that I'm currently logged in as zippity doo And I've used my email address simply because we're going to show also um, how our form functions with the Forms Viewer, but it's still compatible um, with SharePoint, with SharePoint workflows, with all of that logic that you know and love um, working with InfoPath and SharePoint together. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close this, navigate back to our site, actually back to our form. So here I have some formatting. And if I look at my rules, just going to make a quick change here. So if it's rejected, it's not going to show. Submitted shows in kind of a, a yellow, and approved shows in green. So I'm just going to change the approved um, to a little bit darker green there. Or maybe I should change it to bright green. So now we've changed that. Let's go ahead and republish. And we'll see when we open um, this next request, the kind of immediate update even in Forms Viewer. So this is another key functionality of the Forms Viewer app. Should just take one moment for it to publish. We all know those publishing steps can take, you know, several moments. And it should go fairly quickly. There we are. And publishing out. This this is just so a. We will see that immediate. We're just proving to people that this what? is a live demo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We always have to prove that it is a live demo, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, and I'm going to go to my leave request page. And here you can see that we've created a link for the form to open in the forms viewer. So we're kind of eliminating the step for people to have to navigate to the viewer and input the URL manually, which is a great feature. 
There we are. So this is our new leave request, and you can see that bright green on the approved. So we know that they are ready to go on their days off. So now I'm actually going to submit a new. So again, that hide show functionality that we know and love. We're going to pick a date. Oh, and actually, I'm going to switch windows here. I am going to log in in Explorer. As zippity. There we go. And looks like zippity forgot his password. But not a problem. We've got it right here. Okay, so we're going to submit a new leave request. There we are. So he currently has um, used 20 hours and has 40 hours to go. So he wants to take Friday off for a long weekend. And we're just going to say long weekend. And you can see that hide show functionality um, as the user kind of fills in appropriate information. So we're going to submit this request. We can see we get that prompt file submitted, and it's been closed. So if we go back to our site, to our leave request page, we can see that that leave request has been submitted a few seconds ago. So now what I'm going to do is log in as Zippity's manager, which is myself. and just go through this quick approval process. Look at Zippity's leave request. And you can see that I clicked right on um, the column and it's opening in the forms viewer. So in a minute I'm going to show you just how we do that. And the approval section shows because I am the manager of Zippity, and I'm going to say have fun and click approve. And you'll see it takes just a moment, file submitted, and the form's been closed. Now if we go back to the site, there's some things that I want to show you. So first off, this column here, we have a data view web part on our page. So if we look at the web part, here, web part, and we're going to edit properties. We've switched, normally this first title is called name, and that link is going to open using InfoPath Form Services. But what we've done, and this will be included in your webinar package, is create a custom column and what we're doing is using a JavaScript link, this specific link here, along with our title column being promoted to that first column in order to link to the forms viewer. You can see title there. And we are hiding the name column, and now we're sorting by title. So that's how we're creating that link. Then if we go back, you can see that our hours used and our remaining balances have also been updated, not only in this leave request, but if we go to our list where we have our team info, um, we can see that Zippity's hours have also been updated here. We started with 20 and 40, and now we have 28 and 32. And some of you might have just seen that message that popped in my inbox. We also have an email workflow. Um, to email uh, the user when 
their lead request has been approved. So you can see we're using a lot of great functionality that we know and love in SharePoint along with our Forms Viewer. So the Forms Viewer app overview. The benefits are that it really is going to render your InfoPath uh, design forms without InfoPath or really even SharePoint needed. Um, and that's really kind of so that you can continue to use those XSNs, those XMLs um, in the, the format that you're used to uh, with very little modifications. And there's additional features and extensions that are going to be included. Things like Q rules I mentioned earlier are going to be um, part of the app eventually to um, still have some of that extended functionality. And integrating your data with SharePoint and SQL are still um, going to be supportive features with the Forms Viewer app. Some limitations, it's going to be browser only. And currently, we don't have all the InfoPath features supported. As we mentioned, it's kind of a community project. So um, we are on that continuous improvement model and coming out with more and more features with each release. And the cost to migrate. So this is really only going to be some changes um, to your form features and some that are not supported. So I'm going to show one more thing in just a minute. Um, and the cost to maintain, there's no license or fees because the Forms Viewer app is free. Um, and this is really a big deal. It's going to allow you to continue to use your forms without any cost. Um, and our recommendation is going to be that it's for multiple view forms that submit to SharePoint and um, have kind of some of that rich functionality. And how we can help, we're going to, you know, again, provide this app for free, and we're going to continually update the app um, with some user input. And a good example of that was that site column you saw me demo. Um, from our beta release, we had a customer who messaged us and said, hey, it would be really great if we could open the form from the link in the library, and it opens right in the form sphere. So that's what we did. We made that modification, and now you see it in our 1.0 release. Our requirements are going to be 0365 or SharePoint 2013. Um, as I mentioned earlier, SharePoint Foundations is kind of supported on a um, special case scenario currently. And that last item that I want to go ahead and show is actually our site scanner app. So you saw the second link. And this is going to be a great tool for kind of assessing your current InfoPath forms on your site. It's going to give details about data connections and views and um, kind of what is in your form. And this is a feature that um, looks like might refresh here. And it seems to be, let's try in Chrome, was not going there trying to keep this demo nice and speedy for everyone. I'm just going to navigate to our site scanner here. And it's going to load um, my available content types, my library forms, my list forms, and we can see our leave request here. So there's now four items, which is correct, from that view in the library. And if I click that and scan the item, it's going to bring up all the details about my form, my code, my promoted properties, and even some best practices and a recommendation. So this is going to be a very great tool when you're trying to assess um, where to take your InfoPath forms next. And just, just sorry, and finally, uh, Bri, Bri, what's I wanna, next? Bria, I want to just make one comment here. <laughs> it's been a great demo so far. Uh, this is Patrick here at Qdabra, and I just want to uh, remind people that we are technology agnostic. We're a customer-focused company here, so we are. Um, today, we're highlighting Forms Viewer, which is an option uh, that we feel very good about for for many of the InfoPath forms out there. But we also support other options, and we we want to talk to people about all of the different technologies out there, including InfoPath, which uh, in my mind still is the premier forms technology because of the, the uh, benefits, uh, I guess, the, the features that Bree mentioned up at the very beginning, the fact that it has XML, the fact that it's easy to create forms still. There's no replacement yet for Microsoft. 
um, and, it's, and it's free. So, so InfoPath is still uh, the path forward for folks, but we want to keep people um, informed about you know, the changing landscape, and we want to help people to, to plan for the, their e-form roadmap, uh, for their f future strategy. And we think Form Zero is, is a key piece of that strategy, um, but it's not the only piece. Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> And that's really what the site scanner too is going to to help with in assessing you know your forms for a possible migration to something else. And finally, our forms viewer October release. So these are the features that we're aiming to support in that release. We're going to bring in the rich text box, multi line text box, um, and combo boxes. These were kind of features that are a little bit less used, so um, they're being supported later than things like a text box, which is you know kind of the universal control in InfoPath. We also have file attachments. And formatting. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, Bree. We also have file oh, attachments yeah. coming. I forgot to to update that slide for you. But yeah, the oh. file attachment is also coming in, in September, October release. Ah, thank you, Patrick. Yes, that is another very important one that's used quite frequently. Our formatting, um, use of a people picker, which many people um, use in their forms in order to select those people that are accountable or need to be included. And hyperlinks. As far as rules, we're going to try and include our Q rules top 10. So this is going to be um, things like mapping data to lists, um, and some other key functionality that everyone knows and loves. And our data connections, filtering SharePoint list connections and REST query connections. And then our platform, we're going to get uh, 2010 support. And that really brings me to the end of what I have to show everyone today. Um, and I'll open the floor now for some questions. So um, let's see. And Brie, I've, I've, been, I've been answering a few of these. I'll just do a quick recap if oh, it's OK. okay. Um, just for those of you who um, are, are, don't have much time left, we do have a survey coming. You'll be getting the package with the app in it and a documentation on how to install it um, as part of the webinar. So just, feel, just don't forget to fill out the survey. Uh, we, we appreciate your feedback. Um, and we will be presenting another webinar next week. Um, but this is our forms your our webinar for uh, for July, <laughs> so definitely fill out that survey uh, if you want to get the package, or you can send us email, of course. A um, couple questions here. Um, first off, I think uh, I'm going to go from the bottom up here, and uh, uh, let's see. Greg's got a question about Salesforce. Um, what have you heard about Salesforce as a workflow form development versus InfoPath? Um, well, um, not a whole lot, to be quite honest. I mean, Salesforce is. Uh, is a great platform for developing uh, applications. It's been out for many, many years. It's cloud-based. Um, it, it, it does support web services, and uh, you know it, it does have mobile things. It's, it's, I think it's more like a complete platform, kind of like 365 is, with the target being sales teams. Uh, and I think the, the big limitations with Salesforce and some of these other proprietary cloud-based systems is the format of the, of the data. Um, but because Salesforce is a is a generic platform, you can actually create XML forms within it, um, and uh, you know it's, it's interesting to look at maybe as a future vehicle. We K2 is one of our, our our key partners, and they do provide integration with Salesforce. Not all of the form technologies out there do, um, so that that's one that does. Um, and we'll be looking at moving forms here into Salesforce in the in the future, obviously. Another question from Gail. Um, will the Q rules options include date diff? Absolutely, date diff is a key feature, um, and it's very easy for us to add. I think actually we might even have it in the current version of uh, QFS, the Qdabra Form Services, which runs in the back background. But we'll have to check on that. Um, but yeah, Gail, it will it will come uh, as one of the top ten features, um, and we'll we'll be updating you probably in in September with those features. I mean things like insert, things like uh, uh, submit to list those those features will definitely be um, be the ones we target along with some some other top ten features like date diff. Thank you for that question. Chris has a question: Is there a free trial of Forms Viewer? Yes, indeed. Like I said, it's the package will be available to everyone if they fill out the survey. Um, does Forms Viewer require the use of 365 uh, Office 365? Question from Gus. Um, right now, it 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 requires SharePoint 2013, and that means the cloud or on-premise. So if you've got an on-premise install foundation or enterprise, it will work in those environments as well as the cloud. We don't have it working yet in SharePoint 2010. Um, we're looking at that in the future, but right now we're, we're targeting 
2013? Great question. Um, and then um, Michael has a question. Can you explain SharePoint app versus SharePoint foundation? Um, yeah, like I said, um, this, what, what Bree demoed is our application, our, our SharePoint app, and that means it works on any SharePoint 2013 uh, instance, whether that be the cloud, uh, on-premise, or on-premise foundation. Um, so you, it is an app that will install in those environments. Um, it's packaged as an app today. Uh, we will probably look at um, changing that in the future if we decide to support 2010. Um, let's see, any other questions for us? I want to thank Bree. A uh, great, great job, Bree, on the demo today. Um, we're, we look forward to um, having you sign up for our uh, uh, our Forms Your One O product, um, and it is something that we'll be providing, like I said, uh, for free to you. And we look forward to helping you with the install. Um, we do have a, a handful of key uh, partners that we're we're working with closely to uh, assess forms. Not every form will work completely out of the box, but as you saw today, the leave request form, fairly advanced, fairly complex form. So we've already packaged a lot of functionality in this. We've been working very hard for the last nine months on this, and we will continue to work hard uh, for the next year or two or more um, to finish out the functionality. And we're going to be driving um, new features into this this app. Um, and the, the place we're going to start with that is, is Q rules. So we'll start with driving new features in via Q rules, um, but we're, we look forward to adding many, many new features as, as time rolls on. So we appreciate your, your patronage, and please do let us know if you have any questions or comments. And once again, like Bree said, don't forget to fill out the survey form, and we'll send you that package. Um, Bree? Yeah, that's, I think that's a pretty good wrap-up, Patrick. Here I just popped up um, another kind of link on our forms quo site that's really to help people find where they're going in their path. So extending, ex assessing, maintaining, and migration. So those are kind of the four key areas that we've outlined in this, um, this projected path, if you will. But other than that, thanks everyone for joining us this morning. And we look forward to um, having you join us again and you know, hopefully give Forms Viewer a spin.